Hi, this is Emily Lee, part of Art from the Heart, and in this video I'll be sharing a card featuring the Daffodil Dreams and Vintage Jar Layering Sets from Sunny Studio Stamps. The Daffodil Dreams set is absolutely stunning and includes three different shapes and sizes of daffodils. Each version has three layers meant to be used with three shades of a single color. That way, if you're not a colorer or for those times you don't want to color, all you need to do is stamp all those layers together. The two stems are a single layer and the two leaves are two layers each. Mendy has created an amazing stamp guide and you can download it for free from the store website. The Daffodil Dreams stamp guide is on the same sheet as the Timeless Tulip stamp guide. Both of these sets work so well together with the Vintage Jar. If you have the Backyard Bug set, that would work amazingly well with Vintage Jar as well. What makes the Daffodil Dream set really easy to use is that each stamp layer is numbered so you know exactly which images layer together. Obviously 1A, 1B, and 1C belong to the same flower. Also, you know to stamp layer A first, B second, and C last. This is not to say that you can't do it in reverse order or even out of order as I've done before. For the purposes of this video, I'll create my card according to the stamp guide. I lined up the A stamps and prepared to stamp with the lightest of the three shades of pink. I'll be using Altenew inks and the first color is Frosty Pink. Now I'm working on lining up the B layer over top of the stamped A layer. By following the stamp guide provided, just line up the bumps at the top of the flower which I have facing left. There are a few other lines that you can look for once you get the top of the flower lined up. The middle color I'm using is Cotton Candy and the darkest color is Coral Berry. I stamped two sets of the flowers in case I wanted a larger bouquet. I won't be showing the stamping of the second set since I don't end up using them on the card, but it's always nice to stamp extra so you don't have to get out all of the stamps and inks again when you're assembling the card and discover that you need an extra flower. Now I'm moving on to the leaves which I'll stamp in frayed leaf and forest glades. I'll stamp a whole bunch so I have more than I need. With floral arrangements it's always hard to know how many leaves you'll need. After the leaves I move on to the vintage jar. The jar itself is two layers, just like the leaves from Daffodil Dreams. I'm only using the jar part for my card, but the set also comes with a waterline and a lid which has two layers. I had a very specific color theme in mind when I started this card. I wanted to create one of those mini centerpieces that you see at calligraphy events or weddings where there's a bundle of pink flowers in a jar wrapped with burlap and a bow. Since I want the flowers to stand out, I'm going to stamp the jar in greys instead of blues. Grey won't compete with pink since it's a more neutral colour and it'll look better with the green leaves and tan burlap. Blue or mint would look great if I hadn't planned on using the burlap. When all of the pieces have been die cut, I start arranging the flowers and leaves with the jar. I decide that the jar definitely needs stems stamped in it, so I'm going to do that quickly with a large acrylic block. I move the jar and flowers to the panel, then try a couple of different canvas ribbons. I wish they were water because wrapping them around twice just makes the jar look like a mummy. If I used ribbon around the middle, then it might look like a single wide piece, but I decide to try some wired burlap ribbon I have lying around. Now I have the opposite of the canvas ribbon, such that it's too wide. My options are to fold it, but that would make it way too thick for this purpose. I finally decide to cut away the bound edges, which causes the ends to fray a bit and come apart, but I make it work. I was determined to make it work. It wasn't until many days after I finished this card that I realized I had a sheet of burlap fabric stored with my scrapbook paper. I'll have to remember that for next time or when I decide to replicate this card. After cleaning up all the fuzzy bits off my mat, I need to adhere this burlap wrap to the jar. I'm using super strong score tape for this to ensure it doesn't come undone. I tried silk ribbon at first because I thought it would add a softness to the burlap and look pretty. I thought there was too much going on so I cut the tail short and I didn't like that either. Finally, I switched to hemp cord and the simplicity suited the card design more since the flowers have so much detail. I'm sure that in another version, perhaps with a single tulip and a longer stem, the silk ribbon would look fantastic. I use a craft knife to place glue dots between the flowers while they're in position. I'm just trying to make sure that the flowers are at the right height in the jar, as well as relative to the card panel. The nice thing about glue dots is that they keep things in place while at the same time allowing me to make slight adjustments without damaging the cardstock. When the flowers and jar are assembled as a single unit, then I can place the panel back into the misty and use the image to gauge positioning of the sentiment. First, I have to add the leaves to the image. The position of the jar on the panel will be quite different once the leaves have been added. Since the leaves are likely to reach the edge of the panel, I hold it over the card base to help me gauge the position of both the jar and the sentiment. 
Looking at it this way, I decide that I want to soften up the edges of the panel. I'm going to sponge around it using antique linen distressing to highlight the burlap wrap. I used VersaFine Smoky Gray to stamp the sentiment since black would be too harsh, and the gray ties into the color of the jar. Now I can assemble the card. First, I adhere the panel to the card base, then I trim the ends of the leaves where they interfere with the placement of the foam tape and add more foam tape behind the flowers. I use my design ruler to make sure the jar is straight and then use my fingers and a craft knife to lift up and curl the ends of the leaves for more texture and visual interest. Now my card is done. Please refer to the supply links below if you're interested in any of the products I used in this video. You can also visit my blog for stills and more information about my cards. Thanks so much for watching.